Erica wants to find her true love, so she's visiting a speed dating event. She talks to three strangers. Each guy tells her some brief facts about himself. Victor says, I'm an architect. I've recently built the largest skyscraper in this city, and now I want to settle down and find a beautiful wife. Jason says, I run my own bakery chain. I've never had any serious relationships because I was too busy with my work. And Edgar says, I recently got fired, but it's okay because my parents are billionaires. I'd like to find a soulmate to travel the world. Who uh -oh. should Erica choose? Take a closer look at Victor. His teeth are too sharp. He doesn't eat or drink anything, and he doesn't have any shadow. It's not safe to date a vampire. As for Jason, he clearly wore a wedding ring. There's a tan line on his ring finger. Therefore, he's a liar. That's why Erica should choose Edgar. After the event, Erica enters her favorite Indian restaurant near her apartment. She makes an order, puts her bag on one of the tables, and goes to the restroom. After a couple of minutes, she returns and finds out that oh, someone no. had stolen her bag. The waiter says, I saw someone with a neck tattoo running into the restaurant's second floor. Erica goes upstairs and finds three possible suspects. Can you spot the thief? This lady is the only one who has a big enough paper bag to hide Erica's bag. And there's also a wig inside her bag. The next day, Erica invites Edgar over for dinner. She has some candies in the kitchen. They look similar but have three different flavors. Three orange, two strawberry, and five grape candies. Suddenly, the lights turn off in the entire building. Now the kitchen is completely dark. How many candies must Erica take out to make sure she has at least one candy of each flavor? To figure out the minimal number of candies, subtract one from the smallest number and then add all the larger numbers to it. And you'll get nine. Today is Edgar and Erica's wedding day. Man, they move fast. In the morning, the bride is getting ready. First of all, she goes to the shower for 20 minutes. When she returns to her room, oh, no. she finds out that someone had stained her wedding dress. Only the bridesmaids had access to this dress. So, Erica questions them. Lily says, In the last 20 minutes, I was chatting with your mom in the living room. She can confirm my words. Rosie says, I'm not proud of it, but I was in the kitchen secretly eating some snacks prepared for the wedding dinner. And Daisy says, I've been dealing with a flower shop. They delivered the wrong flowers. Can you guess who stained the dress? It was Rosie. There's the same mud under her shoes. After landing, Edgar and Erica take a taxi and go to their hotel. Suddenly, they see a family of ducks crossing the road. Erica takes a picture, but unfortunately, it's unfocused. Can you count the exact number of ducks? Let's take a look at one duck at a time. We can see two beaks, so there's another duck behind the first one. And here, we have two little ducks near the bigger one. And this duck is single. So far, the overall sum is six. This guy is not a duck, it's a goose. But there's one more duck hiding behind him. And three more over here. So the overall number is 10. Erica and Edgar arrive at their hotel. Four employees greet them in the lobby, but one of them is an imposter. Can you guess who? Take a look at the logo of this hotel. It's a lotus with six petals, but the logo on this lady's badge has a five petal lotus. Therefore, she's a fake employee. 
the hotel manager gives the guys a key to the best room for the newlyweds. They go to check out the room, but when they see the interior, they immediately oh, no. ask for another one. Why? There's a transparent lizard crawling along the curtains. This potted flower has teeth, and someone is clearly peeping at them through the eyes of this portrait on the wall. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side. Let's spend the next 10 minutes or so on a nice and refreshing brain workout, shall we? Ready? Go! There are some flowers growing in the field and some bees flying over them. How many flowers and bees are there if both of the following statements are true? If all the bees land on all the flowers, one bee for a flower, one bee won't get a flower. If every two bees decide to share a flower, one flower will be left without a bee. If you answered that there were four bees and three flowers, you're absolutely right. Anna majored in accounting at university. Her roommates wanted to test her intelligence. They took three envelopes and wrote some messages on them. Then they put the answers to Anna's exam questions in one of the envelopes. Only one envelope had a truthful message written on it. The other two were false. Anna wasn't allowed to open the envelopes and could only pick one. The first message read, there are no exam answers here. The second one was, the exam answers are here. And the third message read, the exam answers aren't in the second envelope. Which envelope should Anna pick? The third one, it tells the truth, which means the exam answers are in the first envelope. A businessman was about to go through a security check at the airport when he realized someone had taken his luggage. The airport police had three suspects. Lisa said, I wouldn't take someone's old brown bag. I have my own. Hmm. Mike explained he was a light traveler and didn't have luggage. He put everything in his backpack. Rob had a broken arm and a sprained ankle. He could hardly carry anything. The police immediately knew who had done it. Can you figure it out? It was Lisa. Nobody told her the luggage was brown. Ah. One day, Detective Morris was patrolling a local park. As soon as he entered it, he saw several bags with sand. He kept walking and soon came across a picnic basket and binoculars. A few feet further, he saw some items of clothing and a large colorful sheet. There was also an unconscious man lying on the ground. The detective immediately figured out what had happened. Can you? The man was flying in a hot air balloon. When it started to lose altitude, he tried to make the balloon lighter, but his attempt was unsuccessful. When several friends decided to play cards, they noticed that a few cards had been lost, but they found out that if they dealt the rest of the cards among four people, three cards would remain. If they dealt these cards between three people, two cards would remain. And if they distributed the cards among five people, again, two cards would remain. How many cards were left in the pack? There were 47 cards left in the pack. Let's see. If 47 is divided by 4, 3 is left out. And if 47 is divided by either 3 or 5, 2 is left out. Scott and Mary were on vacation. One day, Mary told Scott she couldn't go to the beach with him because she was feeling unwell. When Scott came back to the room to grab his phone, Mary was gone. Oh. He found her by the pool and asked, Are you alone here? She nodded, but Scott immediately realized she was lying. How? There were two drinks on her table and two fruit platters. 
And now, I've got probably one of the coolest tasks for you. Yeah. I'll show you different products, and you'll need to figure out if they're real products or cakes. Let's start! It looks like a regular bag of Doritos. Can it be anything else? Look at that! It's a cake! Here is a pretty normal cheeseburger, I would say. But what secret is it hiding? It's cake again! Wow, I'd love to try it! Oh, a tube of toothpaste. Can it be cake too? Ah, no! Just some regular toothpaste. Thought so. And some good old toilet paper, right? No! You must be kidding me! It looks so realistic! Mmm, a corn cob. Yummy! It looks delicious, but can it be a cake? Oh my, it is! I'm not sure what I'd prefer now, though. A cake or some sweet corn? How about this sneaker? Is it real or edible? And again, it's a cake! How is it even possible? Oh my god! Now, it must be an orange, right? There's no way it can be a cake. It just looks too realistic. And indeed, it's a real fruit. An eggplant or a cake shaped like an eggplant? That's the question. Oh, I see. It's the real thing. Okay, what have we got here? A banana. A pretty realistic banana if you ask me. Can it be a cake? Apparently, the answer is, yes, it can. Wow. Ooh. How about this cup of coffee with milk? I can't believe my eyes. It's a cake. You've got to be kidding me. Oh, my God. And the last one, the toughest. Is it a clock or a cake? I mean, I'm almost sure it's a real clock, but you never know. It's a cake! Wow, this task has blown my mind! But back to our detective riddles. Amy won $20 million in the lottery. The night after she received the money, she stayed at the most expensive hotel and made a video. It was about her life and how she hadn't seen her sister since childhood. The next day, three girls showed up, claiming to be her sister. All of them looked so much alike, but which one tells the truth? It's the lady on the right. She has the same mole as Amy on her cheek, a tattoo with the letter A, and a tattoo with two girls holding hands. Mrs. Kim called the school principal to report someone had taken her student's test. She added that she had noticed a stranger wearing school clothes, gloves, and a red mask. This person also had three star tattoos on their fingers. The principal didn't believe her. Why? She said the person was wearing gloves, but then how did she see three star tattoos on the intruder's fingers? Ah. Two friends, Mark and Timothy, were walking home from the supermarket with their purchases. That was the last week before the winter holidays, so they had a lot of bags. Mark kept complaining about how heavy his bags were. Then Timothy told him, I don't understand what you're upset about. If you gave me one of your bags, I would have twice as many bags as you. And if I gave you one of my bags, we would have the same number. How many bags were the guys carrying?
Timothy had seven bags, while Mark was goofing off and carrying only five bags. The art museum owner was visiting the construction site to see the progress. At some point, he left his briefcase with important documents on the table. A worker grabbed it and ran away. The museum owner didn't see who it was, but he immediately called the police. There were three suspects. The architect said he had been talking on the phone trying to get electricity for the site as there was none. The manager told the police he had been teaching his staff to work as a team. The electrician explained he had been down in the basement trying to fix a broken lamp. The detectives immediately figured out who was lying. Can you? It was the electrician. There was no electricity at the construction site. Oh, no. Soon after Bob became prom king, he vanished. His teachers were looking for him everywhere. Ah. They believed there were three people who could be behind his disappearance. Bob's rival Joe said he had been dancing all night with his girlfriend and hadn't seen Bob. Bob's classmate Dennis claimed he hadn't been feeling so well, so he spent all night in the lounge. Laura, Bob's secret admirer, said she had been counting the votes. The teachers immediately realized who knew something about Bob's disappearance. And have you figured it out? It was Laura. Bob had already become prom king. She didn't need to count the votes. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side. Imagine that you're on a game show and here is your last task. There are three doors in front of you. Behind one of them there is a car. Behind the other two there are ghosts. You pick a door to open. Let's say the first door. The host of the show, who knows behind which door the car is, opens another door. Let's say it's door 3. Behind it there is a goat. After that the game host tells you, now your final choice. Do you want to switch your choice of doors? Do you think it would be in your interest to change your choice and pick door 2 instead? I'll give you some time to think, and you make your decision. Have you made your choice? This problem is called a Monty Hall problem. There is named after the host of a game show where this situation happened. Oh, yeah. And here are what PhDs and mathematicians say. Switching the door doesn't make any sense. When you picked it first, the chances of picking the door with the car were one-third. Whatever door you choose, the chances are the same. After the host opened the door, the odds of picking the door with the car are 50-50. But when Marilyn Vusevan, the most intelligent woman on the planet with an IQ of 228, was asked this question in her Sunday column in 1990, she replied, Yes, you should switch. The first door has one-third chance of winning, but the second door has a two-third chance. Her response caused a huge outburst of negative comments. What? Mrs. Vusava received thousands of angry letters, 90% of which were telling her how wrong she was and how she lacked basic mathematical knowledge. Mm. Many of those letters were from mathematicians and PhDs. Marilyn wrote a response to them defending her answer. The winning odds of one-third of the first choice can't go up to one second. If you are still not persuaded and think that probabilities change after the second door is open, let's just consider all possible scenarios. There are three doors, and the car can be behind each one of them with equal possibility. So three scenarios are equally likely. The car is behind the first door, the car is behind the second door, and the car is behind the third door. Now let's say there are two players. One is a switcher, the one who will switch the door after the door with the goat is open. The other one is a non-switcher, the one who will stick to the first choice. Now let's see what happens in each case. Let's say the car is behind the first door. Both people choose the first door. The host opens either one of the remaining two doors. It doesn't matter which one, because there are goats behind both. The switcher will now switch to the other door, and the non-switcher will stick to the first one. In this case, the non-switcher will get the car. Professors 1. Marilyn 
zero. But let's consider the other two scenarios. Now the car is behind the second door. Once again both players pick the first door. The host opens the third door, the one with the goat. The first player switches his choice and wins, and the second player stick to the first one and loses. 1-1. One, one. The last case is when the car is behind the third door. The players pick the first door. This time the host opens the second door, because the second goat is there. The first player switches to the third door and wins. The second player sticks to the first door and loses. So the non-switching players win only one time, in the scenario when they pick the right door right away, which happens in one-third of cases. The switchers lose in only that one scenario, when they pick the right door right away and then give it up later. But they win in the other two scenarios, in both cases when the car is behind one of the other two doors. Mrs. Vusavan suggested another brilliant way to modify the problem to make it even clearer. Imagine that there are not three doors, but a million. The car is behind one of them, and you have to make your choice. Say you pick the first door. Hmm. Then the host opens all the doors except door number 777,777. All of them had goats, so the car is either behind the door you picked or behind the door number 777,777. Will you switch? Of course you will! Oh, yeah. When you picked the door for the first time, the odds to pick the right one were one in a million. Now, when you make another choice between doors 1 and 777,777, your door still has the odds of 1 in a million, but door number 777,777 has accumulated the odds of all the other doors that were open. The case with three doors is the same, but less obvious. But who is this brilliant woman who made a monkey out of most professors across the country? Oh. Marilyn Vusava was born on 11th of August in 1946 in Missouri. She has her mother's last name and, interestingly, Sava means a person of learning in French. Mm. Marilyn is a descendant of the famous physicist Ernst Mach. Oh. She took her first IQ test when she was 10 years old, and she scored 228. Just for comparison, on average, an adult has an IQ of 100. Her parents knew of the girl's exceptional intelligence, but they kept it a secret from the public, so that the girl could live a normal life. The girl's dream was to become a writer. As a teenager, she was writing for local newspapers using pseudonyms. She wanted to become a full-time writer, but to do this she needed financial security. Young Marilyn dropped out of college after two years because she got bored and started to invest. Within five years, her investments started to support her enough to let her fully dedicate herself to writing. Yes! In 1985, the Guinness Book of World Records obtained Marilyn's IQ scores from the Mega Society a society of people with one in a million intelligence scores. They published them, and it made Marilyn Vusavan famous. She received a lot of media attention. A parade magazine wrote an article about her, and it was so popular that they offered her to write her own column. Of course, Marilyn used this chance. She started the column Ask Marilyn, where she was answering tricky questions, solving riddles, and publishing her own. This is exactly where she gave her famous answer to the Monty Hall problem. But it wasn't the only controversial problem she solved. Here is one more. Hmm. A shopkeeper said that she has two new beagles, but she doesn't know if they're male or female. You only want a male, so she calls a fellow who's bathing them. Turns out that at least one of them is a male. What is the probability that the other one is a male too? I'll give you some time to think. Here is what most people think. There are three possible scenarios. The two beagles are two males, two females, or a male and a female. Since one of them is a male, then it's now two possible options, two males or a pair. Therefore, the probability of two males is one second. Still, Marilyn Vusava replied, one out of three. 
this baffled the audience. But the key is that two puppies are different, and it's important to differentiate between them. For example, there is a puppy A and a puppy B. Now, how many combinations are there? Both being females is one, both being males is two. Now, A is male and B is female, three. And lastly, A is a female and B is a male, four. So, there are three different cases, when at least one is a male. So, when we know that at least one is a male, getting both males has the probability of one-third. In over 35 years of solving thousands of riddles from her readers, Mrs. Goussavant only made two mistakes and she described them in her column. Now Mrs. Goussavant is 76 years old and she's still writing her Ask Marilyn column, so you can even check it out! That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side. While Miss Virginia Dell was away on her summer vacation, her house got robbed. Three people were caught on the security camera and they became the main suspects. Ayla, Virginia's best friend said, Uh, I've been coming to pick up mail. Sophia, the housemaid said, I've come every Wednesday to clean the house. And Danica, the gardener, said, I come every Friday to take care of the garden. Who robbed Miss Dell? It must have been Sophia, the housemaid. She said that she cleaned the house every week. But look at the house. It's very dusty. She's shady, and she must be the main suspect. Last Friday, Mary sneaked out to a party without asking her mom's permission. Her mom found out about it and grounded Mary for a month. No friends, no parties. Two weeks after that, there was another party, and Mary couldn't miss it. The morning after the second party, Miss Roberts walked into Mary's room and asked her what she'd been doing in the evening. I was solving my new puzzle, the girl answered. Mary got grounded for another month. Why? Take a look at the puzzle. She's barely started it. It doesn't look like an evening-long activity. Jane was a straight-A college student, but her friends hadn't heard from her in a week. When she didn't show up for an exam, her best friend got concerned. She came hmm. to visit, but Jane wasn't home. So, she reported that Jane had been kidnapped. There were three suspects, all of them Jane's ex-boyfriends. Michael, Miguel, and Daniel. All of them denied being in any contact with the girl. Who should be arrested? The note on the fridge is a clue. It looks like a recipe, but it's not. It's the number of letters you should take from each word. Two-fourths of milk gives us M-I, then we have C-H, then A, E, and L. It seems that Michael has something to do with Jane's disappearance. I'll be showing you combinations of emojis, and your task is to guess what fruit or vegetable they stand for. Here's the first, very simple one. What do you think it is? So there's an egg and a plant. So, of course, it's an eggplant. The next one, this time, it's not so obvious. Do you have any ideas? It's a ladyfinger. Good job. Off to the next one. I wonder if you can get this one right. A car and a rat. A carrot, of course. Now let's add some letters to help you. What about this one? What's your bet? O and a leaf. That's an olive, of course. Okay, here's the next one, and I know you'll get it right.
some sugar, or rather something sweet, and a potato. Of course, it's a sweet potato. Okay, now it's getting a bit more complicated. What's your call? There are two types of people who love it and those who can't stand it. It's cauliflower. Okay, and here's the last one for you. Q, a comb, and a bear. Cucumber. Great job with these ones. Esme was having a walk in the forest and got lost. She was wandering around until she found the road leading to the house of a witch, her old friend. Esme approached the house, but the witch wasn't there. <laughs> Instead, there were four open portals. On the table, Esme found the witch's to-do list. Can you figure out which portal the witch entered? The first two tasks on the witch's to-do list are completed so she's most likely left to catch some frogs. The number in brackets must mean the number of sides each portal has. 10 is a star, 3 is a triangle, 4 is a square, and a 0 is a circle. To catch some frogs, she must have used the portal that looks like a square. Cindy was a kind and beautiful girl in her junior year. Two best friends, Dylan and Kobe, wanted to ask her out to prom. So the guys decided to ask Cindy's best friend which of them likes Cindy more. The girl didn't want to share her best friend's secrets, but she gave them a hint. Cindy loves pizza, but she can't stand burgers. She likes to go to the pool, but never goes to the gym. Her favorite animal is the llama, but she's afraid of zebras. Which of the boys does Cindy like? Cindy's friend wanted to give the guy a clue, so we have to look for some pattern. All the things Cindy likes have double letters in them. Dylan has the double L in his name, so he must be the one Cindy likes more. Kate woke up in a dungeon and couldn't remember what had happened to her. The place didn't look safe, so she decided to get out. The door was open and she left the room, walking down the hallway. Several minutes later, Kate stopped in front of two elevators and one door with an exit sign on it. Is it the way out? In any case, the door was locked and required a password. Can you guess what the password is? Pay attention to the numbers on the elevators. They say 13 and 11, so the password must be 1311. In a small, quiet town, young men started to go missing. The police had been looking for them for many months and couldn't find any traces. But one day, they discovered an abandoned basement in an old swimming pool. Inside, there were three young men who claimed they had been held there for three months. One of them was the kidnapper. But who? Look. One guy doesn't have facial hair whatsoever, and another man has grown a beard since he hasn't shaved in three months. But this guy is freshly shaved, so he must be the kidnapper. Oliver is terrible at packing. Whenever he goes somewhere, he always takes stuff he'll never need, so he needs your help with some packing. Today, he's packing to go camping in the forest. Take a look at his bag and decide what he won't need on the trip. Look, there's an electric hairdryer. There's no electricity in the forest, so he can definitely leave it at home. Now look at what Oliver has packed for his vacation in Egypt, where he'll be staying in an all-inclusive hotel. Is there anything he won't need? Is that laundry detergent? Yeah, you don't wash your clothes yourself in an all-inclusive hotel. Now he's off to his girlfriend's place to spend the weekend with her. What does he have in his bag that he really won't need there?
Is it a roll of toilet paper? I think it's very likely that his girlfriend has that. Oliver is going to visit his grandparents and stay with them for a week. They live on a farm where there are cows and horses. Oliver is going to chill and do some gardening. Now check his suitcase. What's there that he won't need? I don't think he'll need his tuxedo. He'll most likely be wearing some casual clothes all the time. Yasmin is wandering through a forest and sees a spooky house. As soon as she steps inside, the door behind her back slams shut. It's the house of an old magician who doesn't like visitors. But there's a chance for strangers to escape. There are three drinks. The red one will turn Yasmin into a mouse for an hour. The green one will allow her to fly for an hour. The blue one will make her breathe fire for an hour. Which drink should Yasmin choose if she wants to get out? Yasmin should drink the red liquid. She'll turn into a mouse and will be able to escape through this little hole in the front door. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side. Okay, it's time to check how sleuthy you are. And Yay! I have a couple of riddles for you to crack, like a walnut. Here's the first one. Detective Callum is the best detective in town who has caught many criminals. Of course, some people don't like him, so he must be mindful. One day, he ordered his usual pack of donuts, which he eats when he thinks about twisted cases. Half an hour later, the doorbell rang, and there were two packs of donuts delivered. One of them must be poisoned, but which one? Look, this box is the same as the empty donut boxes in his office, which he always orders. So this box must be safe. But the other delivered box is very suspicious. Mm-mm, I wouldn't eat that. Sophie has everything in particular places in her bedroom. But she is the only person who knows what is where. Quinn, Sophie's sister, asks Sophie to lend her a necklace for a party. The necklace was safely stored in a little box, but the box was hidden. So Sophie drew a map for Quinn to uh -oh. help her find it. Can you help Quinn to find the right box? The note is basically a map of Sophie's room. You just have to find the object she drew. Following the pattern, here's a box. The necklace must be there. Nova is taking piano lessons, but she doesn't like them. Her mother insists on her playing a musical instrument and makes her practice every day. During the summer holidays, Nova's mom went on a two-week-long business trip and instructed her daughter to practice daily. The girl agreed, but in fact, she never even opened the piano during that time. When Mrs. Adams returned and Nova told her that she had been practicing, her mother didn't believe her. Why not? The piano's cover is dusty, which means it's been a while since Nova opened it the last time. Do you think you know countries well? <laughs> Let's see. Yay! I'll show you several famous landmarks, and your task is to guess which country it belongs to. Okay? Let's start out easy. What do you say here? Of course, this is Lady Liberty, the Statue of Liberty, from New York City, New York. Great job! This one is easy peasy too. What do you say? It's the Eiffel Tower from Paris, France. These are one of the most ancient structures in the modern world. Can you name and locate them?
These are the Pyramids of Giza, located in Egypt. Here's the next one. Can you locate it properly? This is Sydney Opera House from Sydney, Australia. Did you get it right? Another famous landmark, Machu Picchu. But where is it located? Do you remember? This beautiful landmark belongs in Peru. Gabriela is an archaeologist who explores the old ruins of Greece. One day, as she was working, she walked through a tunnel, but at the end of it, there was just a dead end. Oh, no! Luckily, there were three doors, but only one of them would lead her out of the tunnel. There is a sign with three hints. One of the statements is wrong. Which door should Gabriella pick? 1. Door 2 will not lead you to freedom. 2. Door 1 or 3 will lead you to freedom. 3. Door 1 or 2 will lead you to freedom. One of the statements is wrong. If the wrong one is the first statement, then door 2 is the one Gabriella needs. But then the second statement is wrong too. If statement 2 is wrong, then door 2 is the one leading to freedom. But then the first statement is wrong too. If statement 3 is wrong, then door 3 is the one Gabriella needs. In this case, the other two statements are correct as well. So door 3 it is. Mr. Morris is a landlord of an apartment building with a no-pets policy. None of the residents are allowed to have any kind of pets. One resident reported that they have been hearing a cat in one of the neighboring apartments. Look at these two apartments. In which one of them does a cat live? Look, in this apartment, the walls and sofa are scratched on the bottom. These aren't human traces, so the cat must be living here. Several months later, there was another complaint. This time, someone heard a dog. Mr. Morris inspected two neighboring apartments again, looking for traces. In which apartment does a dog live? It must be this apartment. Look, the resident forgot to hide the dog leash. Okay, let's get back and locate a couple of more landmarks. What's the home country of the Taj Mahal? Taj Mahal is located in Agra, India. Okay, what is this, and where do you think it is? It's the Great Wall of China, located in… well, I think China would be the safe bet. Can you recognize this construction? What country can you find it in? It's the Colosseum from Rome, Italy. Maeve needs to log into her mom's laptop to delete the files she accidentally sent her. She doesn't know the passcode, but her mom always leaves notes with passcodes around in case she forgets it herself. Here is the only note Maeve could find. Can you help her guess the passcode? The key is to count the number of figures on each picture. There is one circle, so the first digit is 1. There are four big triangles, but they form three more little triangles, so the second digit is 7. Then three squares and two circles. The passcode is 1732. Another day, another passcode to crack. One week later, Maid needed to get into her mom's computer again, this time to delete the email with her not-so-good grades. The previous passcode didn't work, her mom had already changed it. But here is a new note with the new hints. These are the names of Maeve's family members, but what are the digits?
The first name and the digit next to it give a hint on how to crack it. It's Maeve's name, and the number 5 must indicate the number of letters in it. So, other digits are the numbers of letters in other names. So, 5 for Maeve, 8 for Virginia, 4 for John, and 6 for Oliver. Nicole hosted a party in honor of her cat's birthday, and she invited several friends over. Karis didn't want to go there because she wanted a free evening to play her new video game. So she lied that her mom had grounded her and made her clean the room. To make it up to her best friend, the next day, Karis invited Nicole for a movie night. When Nicole arrived, she understood that Karis had made an excuse not to go to the party. How did she figure it out? Look, Karis's room is a total mess. If her mom forced her to clean it the previous night, it'd be way neater. Arden is on an expedition in a winter forest, and she got lost. Her devices froze, and she didn't know where to go. So she was walking straight, hoping to see something familiar. But then, she came across three ways, all of which seemed dangerous. The way straight goes past the cave where a huge brown bear is sleeping. The road on the left goes through the place where a pack of hungry wolves live. The right road will lead her to the lake with thin ice. Which way should Arden go? She should go straight and keep quiet. The bear is sleeping and most probably won't even wake up unless she makes too much of a noise. And a few more of these. This is the Acropolis. But where is it from? The Acropolis is located in Athens, Greece. This is a famous castle. Do you know where it is? The one and only Neuschwanstein Castle is nowhere else but in Germany. The last one of those for today. You've got this. Can you locate this landmark? It's Stonehenge, and it's in Wilshire, England. Hey, good work! That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.